Tell me, tell me, tell me. Back on point. Because these bitches don't understand that they ugly. Like, they do know that they ugly, right? Do Irene and Micah know that they're ugly? Like, do y'all bitches understand that y'all are two of the ugliest motherfuckers we've ever seen step foot on Love is Blind? Micah, you literally, literally look like Sandy Cheeks from Spongebob. I mean, take a look at this shit. Twins. Irene. I did say Irene looked like Princess Fiona, but that was actually, that was nice. Because the more I watch this shit, bitch, you look like Shrek. You look like Shrek. Bitch, you look like one of those chromosomes that Paul be researching to help save humanity. Like, you look like some shit that people are going to have to inject into themselves to build antibodies. That's what the fuck you look like, bitch. You ugly as fuck. Do y'all know that shit? Because the way y'all acting, y'all not, y'all not, y'all not, y'all not, it's not giving. The faces is not giving what the attitudes are projecting. The faces is not giving what the attitudes are projecting. During Black Women's International Michelle Obama History Month. Review. I'm gonna be doing episode four through five before I continue because I always forget to say this until the end Make sure that you like share subscribe. Okay like share and subscribe. It's lit over here. Okay, it is always a Black Women's Month. This month is Black Women's Michelle Obama International History Month. Okay, get it together I'm already trying to think about what April gonna be Somebody, please drop in the comments and help me out. What is a black women's holiday? Well, what is a women's holiday? What's a holiday period that black women celebrate? Uh, or even if it's not exclusive to black women, we're going to make it exclusive to black women on this channel. Because <laughs> that's just what we do, okay? So let's go ahead and get into episode four and five of Love is Blind. Apparently, love ain't blind. Not when it comes to Irina, okay? So, Zach... The veil is unveiled. The veil is lifted from Irina. Him and Zach. <laughs> yeah, him. Her and Zach walk up to each other. They see each other for the very first time. The very first time that I saw your brown eyes. Your little lips said hello. And I said hi. Okay. Well, that's not the move for what. And if I ever fall in love again, I will be sure that it won't be on love. It's blind. I'm pretty sure that's what Zach was singing to himself once he saw what the fuck was going on with Irene's face. And he put up such a good attitude, y'all. But I can see right through it. I can see right through, but he was very convincing. When he saw Irene, he was so ecstatic. He was happy to see her. He told her how beautiful she was. Again, we have to revisit the fact that as he was telling her, she's perfect, she's beautiful. There was even a moment where he told her, hey, like, you look like exactly what I imagined, okay? And what was the first thing that Irene told his ass? Sir, you look like a cartoon character. Now, again, could you imagine having sung your heart out? First of all, could you imagine not proposing to Bliss, the girl who uh, you said was a 10 in intellect, the girl who was considerate of your feelings, who was thoughtful. She was thoughtful enough to make you cupcakes for your birthday. And the bitch you actually proposed to was a bitch who was like, oh, I'm sorry. I forgot it was your birthday, but happy birthday, though. Could you imagine singing your heart out like this? As we laid in the pause. I knew it was real, my heart you would steal. Irena, you take my blues away. I love you for 
forever and ever and ever I do. I'm talking about this man put his best tenor vocals forward. Irina, I love you, I do. Imagine singing your heart out in that manner for a bitch who looks like somebody's sweaty ass armpit. <laughs> Baby, I'm telling you right now, despite Zach being dumb as fuck, stupid as fuck, and making one of the worst decisions I've ever seen made on Love is Blind, I actually have empathy for him. I, I, I sympathize with him because none of our comments my comments in these videos, y'all's comments in the comment section, no YouTubers videos, no tweets, no Instagram videos will ever, 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 ever compare to the trauma this man will always carry with him because of the fact that forever there will be footage that he sang his heart out to a bitch that looks like somebody's Ripped tenderloins. Okay? Okay? This bitch looks like a failed kidney in the motherfucking face. And he will never be able to escape that trauma. Ever. Like, ever. So, I actually empathize with his ass. Now, let's go ahead and go forward. So, again, he sees her. She tells, she basically tells his ass, you ugly as fuck. You look like something out of a cartoon. Um, and he tells her she's perfect and he even asked her for a kiss like he even moved in and was like you know first of all Zach that thing that you keep doing with your mouth that stop doing that shit that shit is that shit is ugly as hell and you're not an ugly guy you're actually to me do y'all think Zach is ugly I don't think Zach is ugly you're not an ugly guy but that shit you keep doing that stop doing that shit that shit is terrifying please it, it, I don't know I don't know, something about that just gives me Dahmer vibes. I don't know, it's just, it's it's not cute. Stop doing that shit, you too old for that shit. All right, so boom, Mexico. It's honeymoon time or pre-moon time. Well, what is this, a fiance moon? Okay, so they having fiance moons. Baby, Kwame and Chelsea were horny as hell. I'm talking about they was fucking horny. First of all, they didn't wait to have sex in Mexico. Them bitches was having sex at the airport, okay? Kwame and Chelsea had sex at them people airport and I'm not talking about the airport airport I'm talking about them motherfuckers checked them bags in and had sex in them bathrooms that they have before you go to TSA Okay, that's how quickly quickly She was eating that nigga ass down to the airport. I am willing to bet my life saving on that shit Chelsea was eating that nigga ass all up and through uh, what airport is that in, in Seattle? All up and through Seattle Airport, okay? I'm talking about she ate his ass in the pre-Borden uh, Airport. Uh, she he, she ate his ass in um, when they got to the other side of TSA. And I hope that, th that because they was on Love is Blind, I really hope they got the Delta Lounge experience or the American Air Airlines experience. I'm pretty sure she ate his ass in somebody's lounge at the airport as well. She been eating ass before they took off, okay? Them niggas was fucking, okay? <laughs> I'm talking about they was fucking down, okay? So, we get to Mexico. Now we in Mexico. The couples are in Mexico. Um, Jackie, we, we, we go to Jackie. And, you know what? I'm not... Should I do this, like, play by play? Or should I review this, like, couple by couple? Hmm. So, we see Jackie and Marshall. They're in their room, you know, for their fiancé moon. And Jackie is very honest in, in her confessional. She says, listen, if she would have met Marshall, you know, outside of this, or if she would have seen him, like, on Tinder, she definitely would have swiped left. Like, she would have swiped past him. He's not her type physically, okay? That was puzzling to me because then followed up, she followed up that with when Marshall was like, you know, do you want to wait until after we're married, you know, to consummate our vows? She's like, nah, I'm trying to fuck right now. Like, she's like, uh-uh, I like to test drive my cars off the lot. I don't like to buy my cars and then drive. No, no, no. I need to test drive my vehicle before I buy it, okay? And so 
that I was puzzled by because again, she said she was not attracted to this man. Like she literally said in her confessionals that she's not attracted to him. And I'm not surprised by that, which, uh, and then, okay. And then we go further down, right? Later on in the episode before everybody meets, Jackie has this, I think it was like either that night after they had spent a whole day together, like they went out, out into the town, you know, and they had a good like Mexican day, you know what I'm saying? And as they were out on the town, she was talking to him and she was saying, you know, um, I, I am worried that once we're out of this experience, I might go back to my old ways. And in my old life and I is it me or I'm just I don't understand that like I don't understand what she's trying to say when she keeps saying that I might go back to my old ways I might go back to my old life and he's like well you know I'll support you through it no you're not you're gonna be good but I never really heard her go into details about what her old life is what her old ways are bitch are you a drug dealer back home like what the fuck are you a like are you a sex worker like what the fuck because the most she said is she does a lot for her family. Okay, what does that have to do with your relationship with this man? If you have a complicated home life, you already knew that before you signed up for this experience. So what does that have to do with this husband that you just found? Somebody really has to clear that up for me. Um, then we see when they get back into their hotel room, Jackie has this major, major breakdown where like she is, she comes in and she's very snappy with Marshall and she has an attitude with Marshall, but Marshall through it all, he's very understanding. He's very compassionate. He's trying to talk her through it. He's like, what's wrong? Tell me, talk to me, what's wrong? It's just, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm gonna go back to my old ways and you don't deserve that. And you, I, I might go back to my old ways. And then she's like crying, hysterically crying. And she locks herself up in the shower and we see him go into the shower and console her. And like with every big cry that she lets out, he's like, I know, I know. Like he consoles her. Let me tell y'all something. Marshall, right? Th Marshall, Marshall, that's a good man, Savannah. He's a good man, Savannah. That's a good man. But I question if he's a good man for her. Jackie is not attracted to this man. One bit. I think she likes to hang out with him. I think that she makes a lot of jokes. Oh, that's my tonto. Tonto. He makes Mexico so fun. Da, 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 da. She don't like you. Marshall, that girl don't like you. And let me tell you something. She is wondering about Josh. And here's the thing. Some women want a good man and some women want a man that's going to play in their face. We just have to be honest with each other. Some of us like good men and some of us like niggas who play in our face. Josh played in your face the entire time that you guys were in the pods. We didn't see a lot of him, but literally when we saw him in the pods, this man was not saying anything to you that was saying, you know, I'm, I'm really looking to settle down. I'm looking for a wife. Here's what I bring to the table. We never heard anything like that from Josh. We heard that and a whole lot more from Marshall. Marshall was vulnerable. Marshall talked about his upbringing. We never saw that with Josh. And I feel as though if he did say that, we would have at least gotten a glimpse of that. As a matter of fact, what we did get from Josh, remember in his confessionals, he was like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm here to win. I'm here to win. I, I don't like to lose. Like I'm up for the competition, especially when he realized that Marshall and her connection were getting strong and that Marshall was ready to fight for her, which I didn't touch on that in the first video, but I thought that was a little, uh, I get being passionate, but I thought Marshall's reaction to her reaction to Josh wanting to leave also was it was a little shaky it was a bit shaky for me but anyway josh he's just here for the competition he wasn't here to find a wife he was here to win somebody and to be able to say i won and my greatest fear my greatest fear for somebody like jackie 
is that somewhere down the line in this experience, she's going to see Josh, which I think we saw Josh in the previews. She's going to see Josh. She's going to be so attracted to Josh. But girl, Josh is not looking for anything serious. He's just not. Also, something else about Jackie. Um, you know what? I'll wait till we go down the line and we go to everybody meeting. Zach and uh, what's the name for well, Princess Fee or to Shrek? Uh, <laughs> we pan over to Zach and Irene Child, and they are on a nice, uh, uh, not yacht, but what's the little thing? The ca the caravan or uh, not caravan? The carousel, whatever the fuck. I don't know the little mini thing that be floating a little bit on the on the water, whatever the fuck. Y'all know what I'm talking about. They on one of them shits that float on water. And they have a little nice date, okay? He has a nice date plan, champagne, you know, shakuchi boards, you know what I'm saying? Wine, you know, all that shit. And this girl still is bringing up the fact that he looks like a cartoon character, okay? She's like, oh, you look like a cartoon character, but I can't figure out which one. <laughs> Y'all... Zach told this girl that she looked like Megan Fox. Like, literally, he said it with his entire chest. Have you ever been told you look like Megan Fox? He really said this to Irene, the bitch who looks like she's growing two fibroids on each side of her face. Honestly, Zach, now I'm questioning not only your ability to judge character and now I'm, I'm i'm actually questioning your eyesight megan fox like megan fox megan fox like as a lawyer aren't you supposed to be able to read shit like decipher through shit you know what i'm saying make shit make sense nigga how to make that shit make sense to me make that shit make sense to me the fact that you told this Shrek twin that she looks like Megan Fox. Make that shit make fucking sense to me. For real. Like ASAP. Immediately. Okay, we fast forward to Tiffany and Brett. Honestly, Tiffany and Brett just having a time of their life. Brett is saying how Tiffany is exactly what he pictured that she would be. He said that um, her energy, the energy that she gave off in the pods matches her looks the fact that, and he said something else, he said something about her that he could tell that even from the pause that her energy makes everybody around her better. Like he actually described like Proverbs 31. You know what I mean? Like, is it 31 or 91? Proverbs 91, Proverbs 31. Which one is the Proverbs woman that all, all you new Christians online be saying that you are Proverbs 31? You know, everybody monetizing Christianity now. Um, but I think it's Proverbs 31. He literally described a Proverbs 31 woman. And he said, like, your looks match that. You're everything that I pictured that you would be. And then they get into the pool, baby. They make it out. They, mm, 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 mm. I'm that saliva, tongue, saliva, tongue, tonsils, tongue, saliva, tongue, tonsils, tonsils, tongue. Baby, they rubbing up against each other, baby. You saw Tiffany, how she was putting her hand. She was sliding her hand down her man's chest, baby. You better rub on your motherfucking man's chest, Tiffany. Yes! Ooh, I am here for it. Then you see Micah and Paul. They seem cute. Nothing really to talk about. They seem cute. They seem all right. Micah actually really does seem interested in Paul. So eh, it's cool. Um, They give me cool vibes. Nothing really exciting, but they give me like, all right, cool. They getting along. Cool. Later on, you see Zach and Princess Fiona again. They're in bed. Zach is trying to cuddle with her and her childish ass takes a... Uh, a stuffed animal I think that he gave her in the pods or something like that and she puts it in between them I mean it's just honestly like it's just like it's exhausting it's exhausting watching these two during this trip it's, it really is and I'm gonna get more into that later on um baby next thing you know they pan back to Brett and Tiffany baby Brett and Tiffany they on the bed they making out is it me or like the camera was all up in my sister's ass like why the fuck did y'all put the camera all up in her butt like I, I could actually count every stretch mark she had because the camera was zoomed into her ass so close i've never seen y'all have a body shot like that with anybody else on the show so i don't know how to feel about that shit sis is about to go to the amusement park she having a ride of her life she about to go in for a ride but i don't like the way they had the camera shoved up her ass like that don't ever do that again 
Especially to a black woman. Don't do that. Shit. Don't don't do that shit again. Um, Kwame and Chelsea are by the pool. Chelsea is saying about she talking about all the nasty shit they can do by the pool, baby. Let me tell you something. Chelsea could not wait to suck this nigga ass juice again, baby. They was in Mexico, baby. It was time to drink this nigga ass juice again, baby. They was about to fuck again. And let me tell you something. I love this for Chelsea, cause Chelsea know what she want. She knew she wanted black dick. That's why she memorized that man's entire name. Do y'all remember that shit when he proposed to her? When he got down her, on her on, on his knees and proposed to her? She said that motherfucker's entire name. Entire name. Alex. Kwame. Oyoko. Ibambe. Uluwafemi. I'm talking about she knew that nigga's entire motherfucking African name she was ready to get that african dick once they got to mexico baby she was ready for that african i'm I, i'm pretty sure you put that motherland dick on her as well because she said baby that that was the ride of her life Ooh, it's the ride of your life i'm talking about she had the ride of her motherfucking life she told her confession she said listen it was beyond my wildest dreams it was beyond what i expected it was beautiful baby we got to business business was handled stay tuned baby little kwame's and little chelsea's might be running around this bitch before we leave this motherfucking resort just letting y'all niggas know then they go ahead and pan back over to Micah and Paul. And Paul says in his conventional that Micah actually is not his type. I was shocked. Were y'all shocked by that? I was shocked. Um, he says Micah was not his type. But you know what? That made me think about Amber, the girl that Micah made him stop talking to in the pods. And when he described uh, the girl that he would be looking for, he said he would be looking for somebody with dark hair, somebody who's more like witch looking, you know what I mean? Like this, this valley girl look that Micah has is not usually what he goes for. And I was kind of taken aback by that, but also it makes sense. This motherfucker looks like part of, he, he studies particles all damn day. You know what I'm saying? Like he's a scientist. He looking for science project looking ass chicks. You know what I'm saying? Which explains why he likes how um, Irene looks because she looks like a science project. We panned again over to Zach and uh, Irene and they're still on the boat and Zach is singing to her again, okay? And he's singing to her this time. And they're still on the, on the boat thingy. He's singing to her. And she's like, I don't like when you sing. Like, I just don't like it. And I just know Zach. Didn't I just sing to this bitch? Like, I know Zach. And, like, deep as... Didn't I just sing to this ugly ass bitch? I sang to you during my fucking proposal, you ungrateful ass bitch. Like, what the fuck? Like, the way this girl keeps insulting him. Then you see them back in their hotel room. And, like... He's trying to like be affectionate with her. He even like tried to give her a pinky promise. She's like, mm, that's too intimate for me. Don't touch me. Like I, I, I'm just, I'm not ready for all that. And he's like, I don't understand because like in the pods, you were very affectionate with me. Like that's what made me choose you. That's not what made you choose her. We're gonna get into that later on. But he was saying like, you were affectionate to me. Like you affirmed me a lot. And now we're out of the pods and you're not doing that at all. And she's like, yeah, I, I don't know. You know, usually in my relationships before I am like physical faster, but it's just taking me time. And I just, I really hate that with this show. I really hate that with this show and Married at First Sight, like all these shows. Listen, be honest, be honest and tell the man that you don't like him, that you're not attracted to him, point blank, period. Instead of sitting there and making him think that he has a chance with you. And here he is like, you know what? I just feel like you've already made up, made it up in your mind that you're not going to go forward with this. And she's like, oh, no, 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 no. If that was the case, I, I, I would have left already. Bitch, cut the shit. Bitch, you are still in Mexico because you wanted a free trip to Mexico. Can we please cut the shit? Let's cut the shit, bitch. You saw him. You told him he was fucking ugly by calling him a car cartoon character, but you still wanted to go to Mexico. Because when, when, when is the last time a nigga took you to fucking Mexico, bitch? And when is the next time anybody in their right mind after seeing you act a fool with your crater face ass on this show, when is the next time any nigga in their right mind on this planet is going to fly you out to Mexico? You're not going to get flewed out anytime soon, bitch. We not stupid. You can play that shit with Zach. You can play that shit with Micah. You can play that shit with everybody else on the motherfucking cast. Bitch, you wanted a free trip to Mexico and you got it. That's why you still there. Okay? Now, let's go ahead and go to the meetup where everybody gets to meet each other. What the fuck did Irene have on? Like, seriously. 
Like, I'm not trying to be funny. What the fuck did Irene have on? What the fuck was up with her upside down titties exposure? Like, I don't understand. Like, how the fuck are you ugly? You have an ugly personality and you have ugly ass titties? Like, what the fuck? Like, bitch, you are really losing at life. Like, this shit is ridiculous. Like, please get this fucking shit off my motherfucking screen. Please. Get this lady off my screen. I am tired, okay? Um, okay, baby. Did y'all see how Jackie reacted when she saw Brett? Like, is she not all of us? Like, damn, he fine. Like, she said it, like, with, 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 damn, he kind of fine. And it's like, she said that shit right next to Marshall. And here's Marshall. I, I told you. What kind of response was that? That was a very Kappa response. I'm telling you. Y'all that be out there with Kappas, I'm, I'm, is Marshall a Kappa? I need everybody to go ahead and confirm that shit because he gives me Kappa energy. And if you are with a Kappa or have ever been with a Kappa, you might be entitled to compensation. I'm just letting your ass know. So Kwame and Micah finally meet. And he is just so smitten with this girl. She thinks he's handsome. But I mean, Kwame is literally like shaking. Like the motherfucker is shaking like a hoe in church. Like I'm talking about he's shaking like a stripper at the altar. I couldn't believe that shit. Because I'm sorry. Is it me or Chelsea looks better than Micah? Like please, come in the comments and let me know. Chelsea looks way better to, than Micah to me. Micah literally looks like a melting doorknob in the face. I'm sorry. Like, I, I'm not seeing what the fuck he's seeing. I'm not seeing it. Like, is it the blonde hair? And even the blonde hair, like, you could tell it's not hers. You could tell it's clippings. Like, it's not even, like, it, it doesn't even look even. Like, I'm, it's not given. Baby, it's Tiffany and Brett for me. I'm talking about they walked in like the royal couple of the season. I'm talking about everybody thought Tiffany looked good. Everybody thought Brett looked good. Brett couldn't stop speaking highly of Tiffany, how amazing she was. She came over and kissed her man, child. While she was getting some condiments for her hot dogs and her cheeseburgers, she came over. She okay, and I'm talking about everybody was like, ooh. I'm, I'm just saying, like Brad and Tiffany, please inject that into my veins. Whatever the fuck, whatever that love is, I need that. God, God, I have seen what you have done for my sister. I see what you have done for my sister, Tiffany. Jesus, where's so far from Sam Tiffany? Mais ça me pas 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 Sam non pour Dieu. Don't forget about me, Lord God. Come see about me. See about me, Jesus. See about me, Lord. I'm tired. Get me out together. I'm tired, Lord. Okay. So the girls start talking about like, you know, who has sex, who didn't have sex. Baby Chelsea could not wait to tell the girls that she got some motherland dick. I'm talking about she could not wait to let the girls know she got a hip on bed. She couldn't wait to tell them bitches she got that one by one dick. She couldn't wait to tell them niggas she got that colored only dick. Okay. <laughs> she couldn't wait to tell motherfuckers she got that for colored only dick. Okay. I'm talking about Chelsea. And I love that for her. Chelsea was like, baby, I'm wrecked. Baby, I'm wrecked. Okay. I'm feeling like a wrecking ball. I'm talking about wrecking ball wrecked, bitch. Okay. She let them bitches know, bitch, he got that. <sighs> That mother, that motherfucker got that Mufasa. Okay? She let them bitches know that motherfucker was re the fuck out of her pussy. Okay? I love that for Chelsea. I really love that for my sister. Um, Tiffany told the girls, you know, she did not have sex yet. Brett and her do not like running red lights, okay? They do respect traffic. They do not red light. They they do not run red lights in their household, and I respect that. A hundred percent, I respect that. So we go back to Micah and Kwame. You know, she's telling him that she hopes she's happy. Um, she's telling him that she's uh, she's telling him that she hopes he's happy. She said that she still thinks about him a lot. Um, and he says that, um, that's on brand for her because, you know, that's the good heart that she had in the pause. And I'm just like, Kwame, are you stupid? Like, what good heart did she have? The same bitch that told you 
that she needed more time. You proposed to her. First of all, you proposed to her and she denied your proposal. Okay. Um, but then told you to hold on. She just needed to make sure she was making the right decision and, and, and that she didn't want to leave no stones unturned. Then she goes to Paul and tells Paul, if you propose to me right now, I will accept your proposal. She does this after she told you not to choose anybody because she was not going to choose anybody. Then she makes, she accepts his proposal and then we pan to you crying for white women's during Black Women's International Michelle Obama History Month again, just like Dom's stupid ass last month did on Netflix. Now we have your black ass crying for white women's, okay? And she does this to you, right? And then she comes and she tells you, yeah, I accepted somebody else's proposal. Then you give her that whole, okay, bye. You give her that whole speech like, you, it's good. Okay, bye. But then you follow that up with the Viola Davis snot. Kwame, your nose is way too motherfucking big for you not to smell bullshit in this situation. I'm, to I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Your, 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 your nose is like, I'm like, you could, maybe you could fly with that motherfucking nose. That's how big it is. Your nose is way too motherfucking big for you not to smell bullshit in this situation. Get a grip of yourself, please. Then of course she goes on to tell him, oh, you know, she still feels the connection between them two. And if she, if he ever needs her, he's here for her. I'm like, okay, you know what? Like it, this is teetering on, on, it's shaky for me. See, if I was Chelsea, it, 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 it's a little bit much. But you know what? It's the first time y'all 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 seen each other. Cool. It should have been. It should have been done then. It should have been done then. But then you have Kwame in his confessional saying how good Micah looks. Oh my God, I'm attracted to her. She looks so good. And again, I have to ask y'all: Is Chelsea not better looking than Micah, or do I need glasses? Is it me? If it's me, let your sister know. Let your sister. You can be real with your sister. Let me know if I need to enhance my vision. Because I don't know what the fuck Kwame sees in this girl. I really don't. Then you have Irene who goes to Micah and tells Micah, basically, she has the ick. Like, anytime Zach tries to talk to her, she has the ick. He just makes her feel like he, like, literally when he touches her, she screams, ah! Like, literally, she has the same reaction to all of us every time she comes on the screen. Ah! Bitch, the same way you scream every time Zach tries to touch you, tries to kiss you, tries to talk to you. Bitch, America, the world has the same reaction when your ass gets on the screen. Every motherfucking time they pan to your motherfucking ass, we all scream. Ah! I mean, it's like a horror film every motherfucking five minutes with your ass. Okay? So, here's where things really get fucked up for me, right? So, Kwame is having a conversation with Brett. And he's telling Brett, listen, like... Yo, like seeing Micah is just so weird for me. Like, you know, my Chelsea's my baby. Chelsea's my fiance. I love her. Like, I, 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 I love her. I love what I have going on with Chelsea. But I'm not gonna lie. Like, I had really deep feelings for Micah, and seeing her and being able to put a face to the voice is just weird for me. And I'm, I'm having, I'm struggling with that. And as he's speaking to Brett. Chelsea says, hey, babe. And he's like, what's up, babe? She's like, hey, when you're done with that conversation, can you please get me some chips and guac? He's like, of course, of course. Now, you have Irene and, and uh, Micah that are also in the pool but off to the side. And I guess they see how Kwame and Chelsea are being with each other. And you have Irene who's like, uh, Kwame, um... Me and Micah want drinks. Can you please get us, get us some tequila with some salt around the rim? And I love Kwame's response. He's like, oh, you want drinks? Great. Why don't you get the fuck up out of the motherfucking room and get it your fucking self? Get up out of the motherfucking pool and serve yourself, puss ass hoe. The fuck I look like? A butler, bitch? I loved, his, his, I, I loved his response. Now, of course, he didn't say all the shit that I just said, but bitch, he was thinking it. Trust and believe. He was motherfucking thinking it. Especially the way they were talking to him. Irene, especially. And then she's like, oh my God, why is he so fucking salty? Like, see, I like chill men. And it's like, Irene, do you have self-awareness? 
like it's not even just about you being ugly but it's like you and micah then they're like they're like insulting him calling him salty because he wouldn't go get them tequila so then they go and they get their tequilas and they come over to where kwame and brett are and here goes micah oh let's make a toast they're like, oh, let's toast to what? And she's like, let's toast to a failed proposal. Cheers. And Brett is like, what the fuck? Like, whoa, like what is like what is going on? Like, what is going on with the going on? What what are we doing? You know? And in the moment, Kwame doesn't check her, but then moments later, he feels the need to check her. Here's where things again, again get really shaky for me, right? So Kwame goes to, ch to check her. And there was nothing that he actually checked. Is it me or when Kwame went to check Micah, he didn't check anything? Like, you didn't check shit. Because here's the thing. For her to say something so disrespectful to you, she felt comfortable to say that. And then you kind of like have her doubling down on her being able to say that shit to you because she was like oh i thought it was funny and he's like oh but you know i just don't appreciate you saying that and you know i just think so highly of you that was you checking her i'm sorry and then like there's like a 30 minute conversation after this shit i'm sorry like after somebody says some shit to me like that especially in the vicinity of where my fiance is like Chelsea could have easily heard her say that to you. And this bitch didn't give a fuck. And you're showing her that she shouldn't give a fuck because you really didn't reprimand her. And then she's in your face talking about, oh, all this, I still have all this love for you. And, you know, I, I, I want us to be okay. And it's like, what? Then they're just like sitting there flirting with each other. Talking about how they miss each other from the pods and how much love they have for each other. Mind you, your fiance is right there and you still ain't get her, her damn chips and guac. Bitch, I didn't see no chips and guac in Chelsea's hand. Did y'all see chips and guac? I did not see no chips or guac in Chelsea's hand. But here you are all up in Micah's face. I don't understand that. And then... You know, then they go over to Chelsea and Chelsea's like, yo, I, like, I'm about to break this shit up. But you know what? You know what? No, it's their first time meeting. But it's like she's trying to reason with herself because she doesn't want to act crazy. Bitch, you should have acted crazy. I'm here to tell you, baby, that was a moment for you to act the fuck up. Excuse me, what the fuck is going on? And I love how Jackie was like, oh, if that was me, if that was me, I would have beheaded him. If that was me, I would have beheaded him. But then we fast forward to you later on when you're telling Chelsea, yo, like, no, when you're telling Micah, later on we show Jackie talking to Micah, telling Micah, yo, like, Chelsea was really, really messed up. Like, she was really upset about you being all up in Kwame's face like that. Like, you know, I mean, I don't know why she was really upset. It's not like you have control over. And I'm just like, okay, girl, first of all, now I'm really side-eyeing you. I'm side-eyeing you because you had that breakdown when you realized that you didn't like Marshall and you weren't woman enough to tell him, yo, I'm not attracted to you. Yo, I'm not, you know, I don't see this going anywhere. You weren't m m woman enough to say that. And then now I'm side-eyeing you because that kind of gives two-faced energy now like now you're coming across as two-faced to me because you were literally telling chelsea that she should set this motherfucker off which one is it which one is it so fast forward later on we get to see kwame and chelsea go back to their hotel room and chelsea like I, chelsea was right y'all so what the fuck was that like why did you have to have such a long conversation with her? And he was like, oh, you know, I wanted to check her about what she said and let her know that it wasn't right what she said. And she's like, okay, that doesn't take 30 minutes. It doesn't take almost an hour to say that. Oh, well, you know, like, I just, I just, you know, we're just talking about other things. And, you know, like, I, we're just having a conversation. It's like, bitch, what conversation do you have with someone who just insulted your proposal? Like, that's literally what Chelsea is saying. And it's like, I'm sorry, do y'all agree with Chelsea? I do. Like, I really feel like Kwame is playing in Chelsea's face. See, this is what happens when the ugly nigga now feels like the fine nigga. Like, I'm telling y'all, like I said to y'all in the first review, 
Kwame has never been able to get white women's the way he's getting white women's in this experiment. These are vulnerable white women's. Okay, these are white women who really, really, really want to be married. And so now he's gone from the ugly nigga who really wasn't pulling them the way he wanted. Remember what he said? Like, because he was black. It's not just because he was black. It's because you got that big ass nose. That's, that, that, let's keep it a buck. It's because what was happening is your nose was so motherfucking big, you were sucking the air out of every room that you was in with the white women. And white women are very air sensitive. So that's why you wasn't pulling them the way so sorry <laughs> but bitch i'm gonna fucking drag you because again your nose is way too big for you not to be smelling the bullshit in this situation i'm sorry i don't have no no empathy no grace for you whatsoever chelsea was a hundred percent right you are playing in her fucking face chelsea get the dick and go just get the dick and go kwame gonna keep playing in your face kwame is gonna keep playing in your face i don't give a fuck how this show ends up I don't even care if y'all end up together. Kwame doesn't want you. He doesn't want you. He wants that doorknob looking bitch called Micah. Okay? So get your motherland dick and get the strap. Okay? Take this experience for what it is. Get you some black dick and get the seven. Get your roll on. Everybody, everybody get your roll. Just get your roll on, sis. Please. Okay? Um. They pan to... Jackie and Marshall, uh, they're in the pool, and Jackie kind of gives her thoughts on everybody. She said that ja uh, that Zach is weird as fuck, and that Zach needs to stay away from her. And that I was kind of puzzled by that. What does Zach do to you, girl? <laughs> like, is it because of him not picking Bliss? Maybe that's what it is. But what does Zach do to you? Did I miss something? Did Zach say something to to to, to Jackie? Did he say something about Marshall that she didn't like? I was missing it. And, you know, Marshall was touching on the fact that he liked the fact that um, Tiffany and Brett are hitting it off. And here go Jackie. I mean, they got chemistry, but they don't got enough. Chem they don't got as much chemistry as us. Like, they're not going to last as long as us. And I'm just like, weren't you the same bitch who was crying over the fact that you don't want this nigga in the shower? You can play them games in his face, but bitch, you're not playing them games in my face as a viewer. You were crying like that. Because you realize that he's not what you want. And you said you're not attracted to him. Is Jackie okay? Like, no, nah, seriously. Like, it, it's... Something's not clicking with that girl. I, I, we need therapists. Like, this show needs therapists. We need therapists on... First of all, the screening process. I don't know if you guys are giving these guys... These people, like... Therapy before you like like we need a therapist to help screen these people. This girl is not okay Something's off with that girl Remember I told y'all that something's off with that girl um So now we have Zach and Irene they're in a cabana and Zach flat out tells Irene listen like I cannot force you To have a connection with me. I cannot force you to show me affection and she's like, oh, you know, maybe it'll grow, it'll grow. And again, bitch, listen, we know you was here for the free trip to Mexico. Shut the fuck up. I don't know why Zach didn't just tell her that shit, but I like the fact that he told her, listen, I'm not going to try, I'm not going to force it with you. Like, if we can't get this together, I'm done. Like, I am done. I'm not investing any more time in this, period. And then we see them later on. Um, They are in the... Uh, they're back in the hotel room in their hotel room yo and even as like he was like talking to her about like yo like i really want to make this work but I i'm just feeling like you're not trying to do so she took pillows and put it over her ears like i just cannot like this i, I cannot <sighs> okay basically we see brett for a little bit again and um brett is talking to marshall and what did brett say to marshall he was telling the guys that he wants his wife to feel loved in a way he didn't feel as a child you know you have marshall that says to him listen like so many of us we don't need as black men we need to be able to express our love more not just with women but even with the men in our lives like we need to be able to say like yo i love you bro like I love you and to be able to to tell our women that we love them that we appreciate them again that's a good man savannah i i marshall 
is very emotionally intelligent. I think he's very sensitive. He's very sensitive though, but that's not a bad thing. I think he's very emotionally uh, intelligent and it's really going to take a, a special kind of woman to be with Marshall because Marshall is very special. Marshall is a very, very special man. Now let's go to the last scene. We're in the hotel room with Zach and Irene. And she basically has the nerve to tell him. Like, mind you, they're in a bed together. He's on one side of the bed. She's on the other side. She has the nerve to tell him, hey, you know, I just wanted to tell you that on our flight back home from Mexico, I just don't think we should sit together. What did I just tell y'all? Didn't I tell you this bitch was here for a free trip to Mexico? Didn't I tell y'all this bitch was in it for the free trip and the free drinks and the free food? This bitch looks like she goes around begging for food. Like literally. She looks like a begging ass bitch. She looks like a bitch who's in it for the food. And here goes Zach trying to tell her, you know what? I have a theory about this. And she's like, I don't want to hear your theories. I don't want to hear nothing. Like, please don't talk to me. Like, I just, like, honestly, like, it gives me the ick. Like, I, I, listen, I, I don't want to hear anything you have to say. I don't care. Listen, I know I've been horrible to you. I've never made somebody feel this bad. Like, I've never gone out of my way to treat somebody this horrible. I think that you actually should pick things up with Bliss. I really do. Like, and he's like, why? So you could pick things up with Paul? She's like, yes. You know what I mean? We saw her in the episode. We saw her in this episode flirting with, with Paul, putting her fingers in Paul's mouth, mouth talking to her and uh, um, Paul talking to her and asking her, you know, where does he rate her in attractiveness? Like we saw it. We saw it. The thing is, it's just, again, the audacity of this Freddy Krueger face ass bitch. It's really crazy to me. It's really, really crazy to me. And and he's like, you know what? <laughs> what, did, what did Zach tell her? I think Zach told her that he was pretty much like over her by, I think the day before this, right? And she's like, I mean, honestly, like I was over you. I knew it wasn't going to work out. I knew I didn't want you from the time I saw you. Like literally. So again, like this girl was never like committed to this experience, you know? And as soon as she saw Zach, she knew she didn't want Zach. She knew she didn't want to be with Zach. Like, she just wanted to be able to say that somebody proposed to her. And I really think that that that, that tells you a lot about her character because in her daily life, nobody's approaching her in this type of way. I think probably, uh, listen, here's the thing. I, I'll never forget when I was in sixth grade, my classmate, I will never forget, his name was Michael. He told me, Jessica, pussy has no face. I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure that in real life, Irene is a sperm dumpster. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure she's a cum machine. I'm pretty sure. But nobody is approaching her the way these men were approaching her in this experience. And this is something she will never experience in life again, especially after all these people have seen her act the way she's, she's acted on this show. But here's the fucked up part is that you fucked up this man's chances at bliss. Now, I can't put everything solely on her Freddy Krueger looking ass because, again, she was terrible even in the pods. I do feel that Zach chose her because he wanted a project. I think another reason Zach chose her was because, you know, bliss said something in the pods. She said that her father... Was it her parents or her father? Her father has never approved any man she's ever dated. And remember, one of the things that Zach said that he used as motivation to become a successful lawyer was the fact that as a child, he had this childhood of, of his mom being a stripper. And, you know, he had a childhood of filled with trauma where they were less fortunate. Sometimes she couldn't make ends meet. But then also he said as he grew older, he started dating a lot of the family members of people that he would date would not, ex would not accept him because of his upbringing. Right. And so when Bliss said that, that was that triggered him that triggered that moment in his childhood. And instead of facing that challenge, he didn't want to. Even Bliss, with Bliss telling him, listen, don't worry about what my family says. Like, I love you. I, I, am, I, I'm, I am committed to you. Once I'm committed to you, that's it. We're gonna make it work. He wasn't trying to hear that. So he went for the easy way out. He went for a project. 
he went from for someone who basically showed the same characteristics of his broken childhood, someone that he could probably mold, someone that in his mind he thought he could control. And especially as someone who is a lawyer, when you're a lawyer, you get to control situations for the most part. Hey, do this, do that, and I can get you off. He saw, he saw Irene as one of his clients, literally, literally. And so now, instead of listening to black women, y'all are going to learn to listen to black women. Zach saw himself being the hero in Irene's story. And to me, that lets me know that you need therapy. You need therapy. Your childhood is still beating your ass as an adult and you need therapy for that. And so now fast forward, we get to see a glimpse of him meeting up with Bliss. And I don't know how to feel about that. Cause again, y'all gonna learn to listen to black women. Bliss told your ass, if you pick this woman, that lets me know about your character. You have a character flaw there. And, and I don't know. I do feel like in the pods, him and Bliss, I was rooting for that, but I don't know if I'm rooting for that right now. What do y'all think? I don't know if I'm rooting for that. It's like, I do, I would love for my black queen to find her her, her king, but I don't know if her, if her king has a pink penis. I don't know. I don't know if her king got pink fingers. I don't know, okay? I don't know. What do y'all think about all this? Um, drop down in the comments. Let me know. I know new episodes drop tomorrow. I will be watching all the episodes and try my best to have reviews up by Monday or Tuesday. Y'all be patient. Make sure that you like, share, subscribe. I'll see y'all in the next video.